Hallelujah. Uh, I said something funny when I came into church today. Toby was practicing on a mic. I thought he was just over there testing the mic, see if it was working. And I said, Toby, get away from that mic. You can't sing. <laughs> and he just kind of smiled at me and kind of went, oh, yeah? And I thought he was joking. Oh, yeah! He can sing. Hallelujah. Wow. You know, I... Uh, I went, and it's funny because I just told Deborah last week, I said, you know, I, I asked the Lord one time, why, why couldn't I sing, you know, like some people can sing? I mean, I sing with all my heart, but you know what I'm saying, how some people can sing. And uh, he just kind of let me feel what he was saying, which is, you know what, don't get vain. You know, some people are given more than one gift. And we're going to talk about uh, part of that this morning but uh, you know if you have more than one gift that's wonderful because God's done the right thing I actually think I have more than one gift some of it's really uh, difficult when the gifts cross like what what do you do do you sing or do you preach and sometimes maybe you can do both so maybe encourage Toby. Say, Toby, one time, why don't you just sing a song for us up here when you're in your sermon? Huh? Do you like his voice? Anybody hear it? Just me. Okay. Yeah. You know, he's back there somewhere. I don't see him. So He's teaching the children. He's got how many gifts can he have, right? Teaching the children. Boy, he's getting in my territory now. You know. <laughs> Woohoo! You know. Uh, so, anyway, today we're going to continue in our, our series on core values. And... Uh, and, and we talked about it because we started with the Titanic. We said, if you get away from your core values, you sink. That's just as simple as it can be. And this morning, uh, we're, we're going to examine one of those core values, just one. Because it's kind of a, a big one, and uh, I think there's um, sometimes a lot of misunderstanding around it. Um, and a lot of uh, personal viewpoints. Uh, and I think personal viewpoints are good. They challenge us, you know. But I think the viewpoints we need to look for are God's viewpoints. And so I, I've done the best job that I can do on preparing this message for today. So I, I hope better than that that God steps in. And, uh, you know, I'm, anything that's shared this morning is shared to empower you. And that's kind of a strange word, uh, empower. Uh, but I, I can tell you it's real. And there's a reason for why we're going to look at what we we're going to look at this morning. And I think there's a reason why I probably struggled with this one more than any of the other uh, five parts that you've heard before. And if you haven't heard them, go to our, our Sanctuary Jacks uh, webpage and, and listen to them uh, to catch you up. And, uh, but this one, this one deals with kind of pushing you over the top. And I'm going to tell you, we need to be pushed over the top. So uh, we're going to look at today in our articles of incorporation, which list our core values. And I love this. I told you this. I was told that only our articles of incorporation included scripture to back up everything we stand for and do. And uh, I kind of like that. Uh, keeps us accountable. But today we're going to look at uh, 3.05, if you want to go look at our articles of incorporation. I do have... Uh, copies if anybody wants to get with me later and say you know what you passed out copies of all these core beliefs and from the articles and if you want them I have them in the car and I can give them to you later and you can you can really enjoy them but a problem when you list a core value it's like the Titanic one of the their core values was safety for the passengers but you know there was a lot of things around that safety for the passengers and so when we look at the core values, we give the scriptures, but sometimes we need to give insight. And I think that's what we're doing. How did these core values come about, and why do we still need to do uh, boat fire drills? You know, why is that important? Okay, uh, 3.05 is this. The gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is available to all believers. And uh, so as we look through this today, I'm going to be dealing with some things of the sealing of the Holy Spirit, uh, the deposits of the Holy Spirit, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And one of the, the principles when we founded our church, 
uh, was this. We believe in all the, we believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And uh, most denominations now are accepting that. They don't want to put it in the core values yet, uh, but they accept it. Uh, and that's kind of exciting. And they say, you know, if that's your church family, we want you to preach it with all your heart, heart soul, and mind and gusto. Uh, and uh, so I'm kind of excited that most of the churches today have accepted what I'm going to share with you. Okay? And that is this. We put in our uh, thing that it's available. The gift of the Holy Spirit is available. And should be experienced by all who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. And with this experience comes empowerment. There are teachings out there that, that I think for whatever reason um, were developed. And one of those teachings is this. The teaching is that there's only one time that you receive the Holy Spirit. And that's at the time you accept Jesus Christ into your life. That, that, and, and a lot of people uh, teach that teaching. But, and, and when, they, when they get to this, they cite some scriptures. I'm going to look at the three most common today. Uh, so you can be your own judge. Um, and I will give you a little mini testimony on myself at the end. Very, very, very brief. But uh, here's one of the scriptures they quote. 2 Corinthians 1.22. It's, it's God. Set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our heart as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Now I don't know about you, but I like having his seal on my heart. Okay? I mean, I do enough of my own problems, so I like having that seal there because maybe even sometimes when I'm misbehaving and, uh, you know, I, I kind of like to know that the dad still loves me. I'm still his, even if I'm misbehaving. Um, so another one that, that is used, and I like these, I love these scriptures. And I have no problem with what is said in these scriptures. I might have a slight problem with the, the conclusion, but not with the scriptures. The Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, reiterates this. Now the one who has fashioned us for, his, for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Yeah. Now I, I can tell you, what is to come? What may that mean to you? Okay, I don't think it means a little bit more of the, the Holy Spirit. Per se, I think it means the kingdom of God. And I could, I could prove that to you if I had time. But he basically put his seal on us and said, Son, all, or son daughter, all this is yours. Just come be part of the family. So, when do you receive Jesus into your heart? When does that happen? Most people will cite several scriptures... But one that is most frequently used is this, Romans 10 and 9. And it says, okay if I don't give all the scriptures this morning to prove every single point. Is that all right? Uh, but here's the one that's uh, frequently used, Romans 10 and 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, so anybody want to... Can I read along with me? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Okay? And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Why do we have to believe in our heart he raised him from the dead? Why follow him? If he hasn't risen to glory, there is no reason to be part of that kingdom. Because it doesn't exist. So do we believe it? Yes or no? But most importantly, have you confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? Once you do that, what happens? Anybody want to tell me? You will be what? Say, you will be what? Well, 
It says saved. I could, I could go into Nicodemus and we could look at that. Being born again in the Spirit. That is another word for being saved. Um, I actually had it in here, but I, it's just too much. Is that okay? Uh, by the time I finished my lesson plan, I threw away about 20 pages because I said, Lord, I think I'm starting to read every single verse in the Bible. I had to carve it down. But what was the overriding issue with some folks who believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you at what point? When you are what? When are you sealed? When you're born again. Anybody have any other second thoughts? When you are born again, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that therein lies a problem. Because the teaching sometimes centers around saying, you can only get it one time, and it's when you're born again. Okay, I just want to, and if that's true, then you get your, that deposit of the Holy Spirit right then when you're saved. Okay? But I just kind of, when I looked at something that I thought was a little humorous, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 says this, and I kind of was laughing to myself, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Okay? Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Oops. Uh, how did that just happen? Okay. Well, you know, those people want to grab on a scripture and say, well, if this isn't right, then the whole Bible is wrong. They've got problems already. You know, the, the same folks who get dogmatic about, I'm only what I'm telling you is right, are the same ones who have to cross out scriptures. Now, to be honest, I just threw that in there as a little teaser. And I think it's, you know, I don't even want to run down that little rabbit trail, but I want to tell you this, that is not the biggest problem that I wanted to talk about this morning because what I wanted to look at was being receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. Not the seal, not the deposit, but the power. And for me, that is the crux of, of why we put that in as a core, core value because we said, I want you to remember this, that it is available. Now, available doesn't mean you have it. It just means it's available. But as I talk today, if you're a born-again believer, you have a seal on your heart. Can I get a hallelujah? I hope that's everybody here. I hope you got that seal of ownership. And, uh, but I wanted to say, that's just a little small potato oops, but I want to get to the big issue. So I don't have time to do little rabbit trails and prove to you things that are down those trails. And I want to get into the power of the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to get into that near the end of our message. But I want to kind of set the stage for it. Because John the Baptist, who was to prepare the way for the Savior, for his cousin Jesus, John the Baptist said this about Jesus. Now who has a cousin who always speaks well of you? Anybody? <laughs> well, maybe some. Well, anyways, <laughs> these guys are moving with the Spirit. That's a good thing. You know, when you got a good cousin, not only does he speak well of you, but he speaks more highly of you than he does himself. And boy, if we ever get there in church where we speak more highly of each other than we do ourselves, we'll be victorious. 